my art and my dog life. Well, um, this person here obviously is not me, but it's a way that I think that it's an approach of life that we can all have. Um, I'm gonna give you today a couple of tips or a couple of ideas that I would like to share with you uh, in order for you to take them perhaps and take two or three of them and make them and apply them into your life, into your business or into your art world if you're an artist. That's the idea of the presentation today. Well, before becoming an artist, I did a normal career, a business administration career in ICADE. Most, many of you know it, and perhaps it's something that it's what your family tells you to do, and what people think that is the proper thing to do, and that, uh, well, it's conventional, and it's something that helps you in life to develop a couple of things. I worked in several multinational companies, like Repsol, Telecinco, Grupo Vips, and Bristol Myers Squibb. Bristol Myers Squibb is a pharmaceutical company which was my last company where I spent 12 years. After this, I had a, throughout these years, I had a passion. I had a passion with, uh, I mean, art was something that was always present in my life. I mean, it was always present because uh, I liked it as a collector. I used to go to many galleries. I used to speak with artists. I used to go to museums. I used to go to artist studios, I thought that was something that was really fulfilling and it was like a hobby that I had. I remember that my first salary I spent it on a painting. Well, it was something that I liked it and it was my passion during, during this throughout my, throughout my business life. One day, uh, eight years ago, I decided to make a 360 degrees change. Why did I change? 180 degrees, not 360, because 360 is I would be where, where I was. So I decided to change exactly 180. Well, you see this picture. This picture basically shows a frozen brain. And I was asking myself many times whether my payroll was freezing my brain, which is something that may happen. And some of people that work in multinational companies may have that feeling. What the, that was the feeling that I had. The feeling that I was not, I was doing the same thing every day. I was doing basically things that did not, I didn't have fun. I did not like, I was not motivated. I think that motivation is the key fact for everything in life. And I was not motivated. 12 years in a pharmaceutical company where they, you know that they pay, they pay very well, where you have a good salary, where you have a good car, and you have a good bonus, and you have everything that you like. But I mean, there's something that motivation, motivation is something that Either you have it or you don't have it, but it's something that we all need in life for everything that we do. So I decided to, I wanna make a change in my life. I mean, I spoke with my boss, he didn't, he was kind of astonished when I told him I, wanna, I want to be dismissed because this was something in 2009 when Spain had four million people in, in paro, uh, jobless, and we were going to be five million as it happened in 2010 and 2011, as you well remember. So I decided in the worst time of crisis to make an 180 degrees change. So many people told me that this was something that I shouldn't do. They told me, we have told you 500 times, I mean, I used to say, I wanna become an artist. And they told me, te hemos dicho 500 veces, you know, a typical Spanish say that's, that tells people not to do things. So that number came into my head and people were, I mean, and this number is important for me and I will explain you later why. I was dismissed from my company and well, it was like jumping in a parachute to the, to, the, to, the, to the art world. I don't think that life is about finding yourself. I mean, I don't think we have to go every day saying, okay, I, won't, I have to find myself. No, I think that life is something, is like a sum of circumstances where you are making your way, where you are making your walk, where you are making your, your life and you're creating yourself every day. And every day is different. So it's a matter of, of how creative you are and what you do. I had a super cool summer in Tuscany in 2009. I was dismissed, I said, okay, good, I have vac uh, vacaciones de colegio, vacations, holiday vacations, fine. This is gonna be so cool. I'm gonna be three months in Tuscany. It's gonna be fantastic. I super enjoy my, my th because I, I was dismissed in May 2009. So I said, cool, June, July, August, fine. This is gonna be like when I was in the school. Fine, that was what I thought. Then I was in Tuscany in a place in a little village called Poppy. Well, Poppy, 500, things were starting to, the points were starting to, to, to become, let's say, logical. Um, 
September 2009, you come back to Madrid, and the best ever payroll that you will have in a multinational company is the payroll of August, because the payroll of August is the one that you are the whole August in the sea, and then you come back, or in the sea, or in the mountain, or wherever you are, and then you come back, and then you have a payroll in your bank account, saying, oh, wow, this is the most fantastic payroll. Well, September 2009, there was no payroll. So therefore, I had to start to be a little bit on panic, as, as you can see, imagine. This is me, well, I don't know if he was there, but more or less I was there. And uh, four o'clock in the morning, uh, thinking, well, my friends are in, back to their f in their companies. They are calling their bosses, asking, where can I stay one more day on vacation? I said, well, I don't have to call the boss. I don't have to wake up at nine o'clock in the, eight o'clock in the morning. I don't have to be, I don't have to do anything except thinking what I was gonna do with my life, which I did thought when I was in Tuscany. What, what I'm gonna do in the galleries, what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna approach the galleries, because this is something different. How am I gonna approach the, what's the value of the things that I'm going to do? I mean, what is the value? How I'm gonna put the pricing of, 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 the, of the art things that I'm going to do? What's the strategy on, on the web? I didn't have a web. I mean, I was thinking, well, I mean, I have to do a web, but these are kind of things that when you, when you are in panic, go f very fast in your head. And also, I had to do a relationship with media because this was something that all these steps I had to take. Well, imagine September 2009, come back from Tuscany, thinking about what I was going to do. I wanted to be an artist, and I had to do, I had to manage all these things. Okay, fine. Um, so basically, what I decided to create was uh, to become an artist was to do something that was my passion and to become my profession, to do something hip and cool to do something trendy, to do something different, to do something unique, because I didn't want to create something that was seldom. I wanted to do something happy, optimistic, colorful. I wanted to do something recognizable. So with all that cocktail, I decided to become an artist, which is a risky, a risky profession. What did I do first? I first did a Perhaps some of you know, I did a poppy, which is the name of Tuscany, remember? I did a uh, uh, French bulldog. It was my first sculpture, and it was guided, I was guided for the parameters that I had when I was a collector. I wanted to do something unique, as I told you, I wanted to do something different, I wanted to do something uh, hip, cool, and I sculpted my first piece that was this French bulldog. This was ex exactly the first bulldog that I did. Well, this was, was very nice, very, very cool. I liked it very much, and I started with my creativity doing, I said, okay, I'm gonna make 500 unique pieces. Not all of them at the same time, obviously, because I would not fit in my house. But I, I, I started creating one, two, three, four, and I created like, at the beginning, I think I created like 25. Most of them, as you can see, are inspired in many things that surround us. Like this was when Barack Obama became president of the United States, or this was of Tintin with, uh, with because of my childhood. The, all the art that I do has got an influence throughout um, in my life. I mean, things that had happened in my life. This is a social, this was a USSR and this break of the communism with the uh, Othiel Martillo broken. Um, Superman, because I like the movie. Uh, this one because I don't know. I, perhaps I thought the eyebrows were, were funny, the heart with a, with a, with a, um, Esmeralda. Um, this one was like a carnival because I went to a carnival and I like the masks. So I mean I was recreating, but suddenly, well, I wanted to do something unique and I did. I decided to sign it in a very unique place, which is where I sign all my art, and I liked it. And I also did something that was numbered, a limited number a limited number of 500. And I numbered them also in a different place. Well, this was fun. And then suddenly I found that the, 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 my, uh, sal my salon, my uh, living room, was full of poppies lining up like this. And they were very nice and they were very cool. But I said, what, what do I do with this? I mean, I mean uh, now that I want to create this and I have created this, we need to do something. So the question was, how did I present poppy to the world? Because obviously I was not. I, was, I had a lot of ideas and of creativity, but I had to stop because otherwise I didn't have a place to sleep in, in, in my room. So I basically did four things or four 
I thought that there were four key factors that were the ones that I had to touch. One of them was press, one of them was media, the other one was social media, and the other one was influencers. These were the four things that I had to do in my first approach to get Poppy to be known to the world, because otherwise they were going to be resting in my house for the rest of my life. So I said, I have, I have to do something with this. OK, so I went to a friend's place. He took me a couple of photographs of a studio. And I talked, and I called the press. And I told them, look, I just finished my work. I've become an artist. I want to do French bulldogs. I want to do sculptures, and I want them to be funky. And the people in, in the press at the beginning, sometimes maybe they thought it was a joke. Maybe they thought it was a crazy guy calling them. Or maybe some of them called me and said, OK, send us, send us an email with your, with your pictures, and send an email with your with your, uh, not CV, because at that time, you didn't have a CV of, of artistic ex exhibitions. But they liked the idea. And they started thinking that, well, I think that the, what he sh this guy shows is different, is unique, it's colorful, it's happy. It may be something that we can, as, 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 as uh, periodistas, as journalists, we can uh, put in our, in our media, because it's something that people are going to like. And things started moving and going, and well, I think that it was something different, it was something funky, it was something hip, it was something cool. And sometimes media don't have a lot of things that are different, and I don't know, it just started working and working and working. And I've always thought, and this was the result of going into the media, talking with the media, talking with and sending them all the information. I don't think that if you don't communicate, you don't exist. This is something that is important in everything that you do. I don't think that we, and especially artists, is you can have all your art in your house or in a cave in Ibiza, but if you don't communicate it, it's something that is, people are not going to see. So I don't think that we should, be, we should be communicating everything that we want to be communicated. Otherwise, it just simply doesn't exist. It may be very known for our family and friends, but that, that will be all of it. Also, I think that, that we have to be grateful. Grateful in the way that uh, whenever you have a blogger, an influencer, a journalist, a person that goes and puts something about you in media, is something that you should be grateful to the person. Whenever it's a holiday, whenever it's Christmas time, whenever it's their birthday, whenever they are awarded for something, Send them a bottle of wine, send them a card, send them a perfume, send, do something. But be grateful with people that, are, that, help you, that help you all the time. After being, ma making a press labor, I think that exhibitions came along the way. Because many people were, oh, yeah. Some galleries said, oh, yes, I've seen you here. I've seen you in Vogue, or I've seen you in L, or I've seen you in, in AD, or I've seen you in GQ. or." Obviously, if what you do is not fun, it's not sexy, and it's not cool, this will not, will not, will not work. But I mean, because galleries know what, peop, what, what artists they choose. But also having a part of media helps. And this is what I did. I had a lot of exhibitions done because they liked what I had, and also they liked the way, the approach that I had. Because probably it's not a very artistical approach. Most artists go to the galleries and show their work. I went to the press and showed my work. Perhaps this was a different approach. And for as, as a, as a, um, uh, something that I was feel very proud, it was last year when the Court English, they called me and they told me, we want you to exhibit in the Court English of Castellana, which is something that for me was very happy, like was the recognition in their gallery of art, in the recognition of a work which was, well, that I was doing throughout these years. It's not very common that Court English calls you. Normally, you call Court English. And when you become, when your passion becomes your profession, then it's, it, it becomes fun. This is not a very, as you can see, it's not a very stressful exhibition that I, that I did in Ibiza last year. Um, sometimes I think that getting out of your comfort zone is something important. This is an exhibition in Mexico. This is an exhibition in Milan. This is an exhibition in Hong Kong. Getting out of your comfort zone helps you to, to, to to get to this, because otherwise you're going to be all the time in Madrid or in places which are near you. I mean, getting out of your comfort zone, I think, is something that in any occasion and in any scene of life helps, helps very much. Um, once you have 
down, you have the press and you have got the, um, the, uh, all the exhibitions, then the brands come and the brands help you because, or contract you because they like what you do and also because you've got a way of recognition with the, with the press and with exhibitions. This is something that, that Mini asked me for an exhibition with the launching of the new model of the Fluor model. The Fluor was a new Mini that they did and they asked me to do an exhibition for them with the puppies. This slide may be very obvious because many people told me, oh, well, yeah, Bulldog Gene, Bulldog, it's something that is so obvious. This wasn't obvious at all because I kept on asking and calling all the product managers in Spain of Bulldog, and they didn't, they didn't listen to me. They said, who is this guy calling us? I mean, they didn't understand the, the method, uh, what, I, what I was explaining to them. I had to call the CEO in New York, which was an Indian guy called Anshuman Bora, who used to work for JP Morgan and created this Bulldog team, to explain to him that I wanted them to be my partners in all the exhibitions that I was doing. He understood it in two seconds and called the people in Madrid and tell them, hey guys, what are you doing? I mean, you should be partnering with, with, with art, you should be partnering with a guy that's doing Bulldog, and you should be partnering with, with him. So, I mean, sometimes what I wanna say is that things are not so obvious. I mean, we may think they're obvious, but in sometimes partnering with brands is not that, that easy. As Neil was saying, sometimes brands also want artists to do things with them. This is something that I asked, uh, was asked by eBay to, be a, a create, to make a creative apartment, uh, to make a creative apartment with a little trick. It had to be less than 1,000 euros. Less than 1,000 euros spent on eBay to create an apartment. The approach here is that sometimes when you have got the exhibitions, you've got the press, and you've got the brands, then brands that are perhaps in a way, un, uh, how do you say, it? Um, difficult to match with you, like eBay, they ask you to do things because they want your creativity to be with them. And eBay is a, is a, is a internet port, portal internet, and they sell things there, but says, okay, we want to launch and we want to focus on furniture and we want an artist to do a creative apartment for us and we want to show people that we, they can do furniture and we can do an apartment, a cool and hip apartment for a thousand euros, everything purchased in eBay. It's a different approach and that's what I'm saying is that sometimes brands partner with you because you are creative and you do approaches which are different. As on creation of Neon lights. This is something that I did for Glenfiddich, which is a whiskey brand that asked me to re, re reinterpret their uh, logo with the with the ciervo. I don't know how you say ciervo in English. Deer, with the deer. Um, I think that you have to partner with brands that have similar values as yours. That's my experience. Perhaps uh, I think it's something that I I will not partner with a brand or I will not do a, a, a job for a brand just for the sake of it. I mean, just because it's a brand that is known, no. It has to have some values that you, you, you have to do things with them. Uh, brands like Doug Ewer or Lexus or also are brands that have got the values that I think that correspond to the level of people that like the art that I do. If I was asked by another type of brand, I don't know what I will do, but I will think a lot about it. I think that collaboration also with NGOs is something that is important for an artist because sometimes you have to do part of your work for uh, collaborations with, uh, for example, this was Chris Cancer Foundation in, in London, or this was with uh, Eva Longoria in, uh, in Marbella with the Starlight Gala that, 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 that she was holding, and both of them auctioned the, the art that, that was donated to, 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 the, to these NGOs. Um, Influencers, I think that influencers is a key fact for, 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 for what, for us. I mean, we all like to be, to look at other people and perhaps it gives sometimes to the artists, to the people that, that are doubting about your art, if they see some people or they see, this is Samantha Vallejo Najera, the master chef uh, presenter that was, that put some of the, her, of these uh, sculptures in her program uh, during, during one of the shows. I think that influencers is something that uh, helps. It helps sometimes the people that are doubtful when they see that, that the art is also by people that are, they tend to be reflected on. It helps them to, to, to make it to, to be more, more likeful. 
um, opportunities always exist, and, think, and I think that you have to find them. And this is an example that, that I feel kind of proud of, because when I was having dinner in Diverso three years ago, uh, the girlfriend of David Muñoz uh, came to the table where we were having dinner, and she, well, I explained to her what I was doing, and she told me, oh, we're go just going to give, a, a, we are going to get a first star, Michelin star this week. I told her, why? I think that, that you could give David a present with a poppy, with the, your name, with a star on the back. So she started thinking. She looked at me vaguely, rarely. She kept quiet. She didn't say anything. But after a week, she called me, and she said, I, I think it was a good idea what you told me. I think that I'm going to give David as a present for her first star. This is culture personalized with our name, Diverso, and with the star on the other side of the door. So sometimes opportunities exist. I mean, a anything can come out of a dinner, of a conversation, or, or of, of, of anything that, that you, are, you are on. So that's one, one of the learns that I, that I have from, this, from these years of, uh, of artists. Um, the family grows. This is people and people, which are some pucks. I think that you don't have to stop your creativity. It has to be, as an artist, it has to be all the time with different approaches, different materials, different things, different uh, elements and different ways of doing things, completely different ways of doing things. These are mini bulldogs. Uh, this is also a love bomb. This is, I went to Venice for a trip, and I went to the Peggy Guggenheim Museum. I don't know if you've been to that museum, but it's a fantastic museum. And I saw a, a heart, a really big heart made by Jeff Koons. And uh, I came back to Madrid and said, oh, wow, I, I want to do something with, with the heart. I mean, I think it's had enough of dogs, and we're going to do something with the hearts. So <clears throat> I created this heart that it's uh, like, a, like a bomb, like a granada, hand grenade, where you can just pull the, the metal part that's the ring that's on top, and you put a message inside, and you give it to a person that you love. So that's what's called love bomb. So it was a mixture, but everything came from a trip to, to Venice and to the Pe with the Peggy Guggenheim Museum. I also partnered to make the launching with uh, brands that were uh, interesting, like Oxley. I don't know if you know that brand of gin, and with this was uh, some of the press releases that were that were uh, done. This is for um, for a serie, uh, for a serie magazine. Uh, when passion becomes your profession, then it's fun because you are making things. That this is the presentation of Love Bomb, which I did in the Palacete Miguel Angel in the Calle Miguel Angel of Madrid. And this was the night of the presentation. And I think that when you enjoy it, when you enjoy what you do, I mean, you don't really work because things are, are easier and you don't feel really stressed about it. <clears throat> and I mean, at the beginning, yes, but then when it goes, when, it when the things start, it, it goes and, it, and, it's, and I think it's fun. I mean, if you really enjoy what you do. Um, this lady is called Grace Coddington. And uh, she says this, she says, that you always have to keep your eyes open and you have to keep watching because whatever you see can inspire you. And I really, really, really think that this is true. Great, uh, Grace Coddington is the has been the art creative director for Vogue magazine in New York during 15 years. She also she has been working also for Vogue and she has gone also that one for Calvin Klein and she used to be a model. Uh, I think that lunch or eating can be fun. It's a social event. It's something that people do and people have fun. So I said, well, I'm going to create a furniture model, a furniture, a line of furniture, but it has to have some things that are related to, to what, I, what I do. As you see, the legs of the table have got the, the bulldog legs. You can see the light on top. And this is something that I thought, why can't people have fun while they have lunch or while they have dinner? So I decided to create these tables. and to make them luminous, and you can make the color change while you're having lunch. Linking all the things that I believe that art should, should have, creativity, uniqueness, tailor-made, and all that kind of, of, of things that are, that are, I think, that are important when, when this. Paintings is something that I have uh, <coughs> done the latest. Um, really, I think that creativity is like water. I mean, sometimes you don't know where it's going, but it flows. And I mean, and painting is something that I was really not happy doing at the beginning because I always trusted more doing sculptures and doing things that were with my hands. But now I believe that I'm going to go to with the trend of doing paintings because I think it's very, um, 
let's say, different, and, and, and I feel like it's something that is calling me. The painting is something that I have never done, and I've just started doing, and I think that it's, it's, going, it's, going, it's going well. Uh, as I said before, designs for brands are things that brands ask you when you are a creator, when you're an artist, and when they want your creativity to be with them. And for example, this is, was the design of socks for a company called Naif. This was an award design that for the, for the people in Fora Serie magazine, for the most talented people in 2015. So you can design, if you are creative, if you're an artist, if you have got creativity, everything can be created. I feel very happy with this picture because Antonio Lopez, for me, the best Spanish painter in this 25, 21st, 20th, and 21st century, asked me after he was given the award, how did I create it, why did I do it, how did I shape it, how did I paint it, why did I paint it like that? I, was, I, 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 really, I really like this, this picture because I think that Antonio Lopez is a, is a real genius. Or doing a project with, the, with wine. I mean, this is a, a, a una bodega, a, a winery, that asked me to make uh, unique designs for them with the, with the Abla bottles, which is, a, which is a brand that I'm going to develop with, 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 with them. Um, I would like to just to, after I've explained you these things, perhaps a little bit fast. Sorry if I've been too fast. I would like just to, to, to recap a couple of things that I think that are worth just thinking of them, and maybe they can give you an ideas of how to make approaches. First of all, I think that intu intuition is just another type of intelligence. I did not have, never have had a PNL, a forecast, a budget, or anything that makes logical my work. I don't want logical to be logic to be applied to art. I do things because I feel like doing them, because I like them, and because my feeling, and because I love to do them. Intuition is something that during the past 300 years, or 300 million years, we, the humanity has lived with it. People were, when, we're, when we were in the caves, people were, were follow the, they followed the intuition. They didn't follow the rational part. The rational part is something that in the past 2,000 years we've had. But across all the history of humanity, intuition is what people were using to, to act, to go to, the, to go to hunt, to move, to develop, to rationalize, to, re to relate with others. It was pure intuition when we were in the caves not a not long time ago. I think that like, luck is just uh, fortunes, and uh, good luck is earned. Um, and this is something that I, that, that, I, that I always try to explain, but I don't know if I explain it very well. I think that luck is, suerte is something that it's once, it's one, like when you, you win the lottery, or when you win the coupon de la once, or you, when you win things, I mean, it just happens, or when you go to a discotheque and you get a pair of uh, skis because there's a raffle. That is luck, that's luck. That's something that people, just happens once, but good luck is something that when your luckiness or when your luck is repetitively a long time, and that happens when you make your luck to be created on, on the way, on, on, the, on, the thing, on, on your development and in your work, then luck is repetitive and constant. There is a book from Fernando Trias de Vez, <coughs> which is called La Buena Suerte, Good Luck. I think it's a fantastic book. And I really recommend it. It's very short and very easy to read, but it, it exactly gives you the difference between, what's the difference between luck and good luck. Luck is once, and good luck is having luck many, 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 many times in different, 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 different things. I think that you are your own brand either, so you have to be aware of your reputation. I mean, your own brand, why? Because where you're a consultant, you're a lawyer, or you're a banker, uh, you are your, brand, so beware of your reputation. If you commit to give a work in this date, at this hour, or this time, don't do it the next day, on the wrong hour, or in the wrong date. I mean, for example, as an artist, I, I see a lot, of, a lot of times that when I go to exhibitions, or when I go to, to, to uh, muestras or, or, or places, I see that some of some, not, not most, fortunately, but some of the artists are very, are not used to be uh, punctual in their deliveries or in their on their, on their commitments. I think that's important. Even if you're an artist, you're a banker, or you are whatever you are. Uh, you know, um, creativity. 
I think that great ideas, are, 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 as I explained to you before, arise completely illogically. I don't think that there is a pattern. I mean, I can be looking at your shoes, which I think they're very nice, and, uh, and I think that the combination of sweat and gold are, is very cool. So, I mean, that may be an idea to create something. So, I mean, it's just uh, great ideas arise completely in an illogical way. Thank God. Uh, if we don't know, I think that we have to learn. I didn't know how to do furniture. I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to do the creation of the furniture and put the aluminium and put. But I, I knew that I wanted to do tables. I wanted to do night tables. I wanted to do dining tables. So I don't think we have to be scared of of, of learning. I mean, it's something that is, don't, don't say no to something because you don't know. I mean, there is perfect possibilities to learn it along the way. I mean, there's people. Sometimes we tend to say, no, no, I can't do that. Say, no, why not? I mean, I think that we all can do what we want. It's just a matter of learning. And learning is not very complicated. I think that to be an entrepreneur, it's a 24-hour work. If you don't, if you're not expected or you don't want to be working 24 hours, and I mean 24 hours even when you're sleeping. Sometimes I sleep and I have ideas and I write them in the mesilla de noche, in the night table. And I, at the next day, I, I wake up and I say, oh. So, it's a 24-hour it's a, it's a work, it's, it's a job. I mean, it's something that you have to be prepared for that if, if you like entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a difficult word to pronounce in English. I think that motivated people build pyramids. And I think that this is something that has got to do with what I told you at the beginning. When people are motivated, when you have got a team that is, works for you, or, or, or you are in a company that you are working for, and, you, and motivation is the key fact between being working and your output is 150% for your salary, or your output is 80% having the same salary. So if you are motivated, you will deliver much more than you if you're unmotivated. So it's really a matter of, of having people and being motivated in life. It's something that I think is really, really, really important and makes all the difference. And if you're not motivated in your job or in your work or in what you do, I will recommend you to, to, to change it. Um, Dream impossible things. I, if you persist, they come. I think that if I was asked a couple of years ago that I was not going to be wearing a tie for the next nine years, I was asked for that in the tw 12 years ago, I would have never thought that I was, I was going to be an artist. But I was always with the dream of the dream and the dream of being an artist and changing my life. And sometimes you just have to keep on persisting on that dream. And that is really helpful, and it helps you to change, and even you have to put a posit in the, in the mirror every morning to say, I want to do this, or my objective is this. Put the posit on the mirror, and you will see that when you are thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and rethinking on that, it comes. Um, we only live once, and this is not a joke. Uh, solamente se vive una vez, as we say in Spanish. I mean, and this is something that. Uh, People say, no, because when I, when I retire, I'm going to do this. And maybe when you retire, you are dead. So I mean, don't wait till you retire to do things. You have to do them throughout your life. I mean, you, you don't need to, to be waiting and waiting to enjoy. And when I retire, I'm going to visit this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to become this. You say, no, I mean, come on. I mean, you, you, you have to, you have to, to do things. Uh, we only live once. Solo se una vez. I like that, that phrase. And last but not least, and this is a slide that is always, I like to finish my presentations with, is that I think it's basic that in whatever we do, and whatever every aspect of life, is not talking and thinking and doing and rethinking things. I mean, don't talk too much and put your heart into it, because that will work. Thank you very much for